hey this is sensibility speaks welcome to my channel thanks for stopping by and don't forget to like share and subscribe this channel discusses trending topics celebrity news and reality tv When a man stand up for you, that's great. But when a female stand up for me, that that means the world to me. So I want to make, I want to give you a little bit of her story. All right. I want to give you, I'm a, I want to rewind it because I feel like my success impact y'all so fast that I don't think that y'all was with me in the 2014s, 2015s and everything. And let me tell you how Cardi B got started, right? Before I was on Love and Hip Hop, I had two million followers, right? Two million followers, mind you, my page got deleted about three or four times because, you know, I used to pop heavy out of my mouth. I used to talk crazy out of my mouth. Um, I started doing videos because um, I broke up with a guy that really broke my heart. Um, I was going through it. I had, like, this anger towards men because, you know, I was a stripper. I was going through some shit and I was just fed up. So I used to go on my social media and I used to talk shit. And out of nowhere, people just started following me, following me, following me. I built the following. I had all y'all male rappers. I had all the male rappers following me. Um, I had all the influencers, the female influencers following me. Bitches started calling themselves hoes and all that. I even had Kardashians following me, bitch. I had Kardashians following me. Chris Rock used to hit me up talking about he want to make a movie for about my life and everything. So, boom. Then, I got on Love & Hip Hop. And who got me on Love & Hip Hop was my old manager. And my old manager, he, was, he's not no, he wasn't no industry nigga. He ain't no industry nigga. He, he wasn't in the music industry, none of that shit. He used to manage DJ Self. He was a regular nigga from Queens. I told him I want to get on Love & Hip Hop. Um, it was hard for me to get on Love & Hip Hop, but, you know, we made a storyline with DJ Self, and boom, we got in there. Before Love & Hip Hop premiere, I was working on music. Um, my manager at the time, he said that, like, yo, every single time you get in the car, you remix things really fast. You should, you should consider doing music. I really was not with it at first because it's like I was, like, a little shy. And then he took me to a studio, he played, he put me a beat, he's like, write to this shit. I wrote to it, I made strip a hole. And I made, I need all my money makers, bring that cash out. I bring all my money in there, bring that cash out. He's like, we gotta shoot a video right now for it. I'm like, all right, whatever. Before Love & Hip Hop premiere, before Love & Hip Hop premiere, I wanna get emotional. My manager at the time told me, you need to quit stripping before this show airs out. And I told him, I don't want to tell the world that I'm going to quit stripping because if love and hip hop don't work for me and these things don't work for me, I'm going to go back to the strip club because there was girls that were strippers and um, went on love and hip hop. And they said, like, you know, I'm going to they, they ended up going back to the strip club and, and the bitches in the strip clubs were making fun of them. I didn't want it to be that. But he was like, you know what? You got to believe in yourself. So I bet it on myself. And I think on my 23rd birthday, I said, this will be the last day that I strip. And I told the world that this will be the last day that I strip. All right, boom. Love and Hip Hop is out. And I use Love and Hip Hop as an engine to showcase that, you know, I'm an artist and everything. Because people didn't, people didn't really know that I was doing music. Because, you know, I was funny, but they didn't really know that I was doing music. So I'm showcasing that I'm an artist and this is what I want to do and all that bullshit. All right, boom. So Love and Hip Hop premieres. I have a song and people are listening to it. It's, it's charting on this random ass chart on Billboard, whatever the fuck. We go to a label and they told me that they wanted to sign me for $50,000. They wanted to sign me for fifty thousand dollars, and they had to finish watching because Love and Hip Hop was playing. But like, the, it was like Love and Hip Hop hasn't finished the first season, so there was that, and we have to see, um, we have to see your actions on Love and Hip Hop because if you too like ratchet or if you're doing too much, we can't sign you. So, um, my manager 
at the time told me like, now nah, we we're not gonna sign you for no fifty thousand dollars because they're already offering you a hundred thousand for season two of Love and Hip Hop for your second season. We're not gonna like they're not gonna shortbread you. I right. so um we keep going to these labels and we keep showing them that people keep listening to the stripper hole song and then we put forever ran down on that bitch twice and we putting the mixtape out. It does good in numbers. But it's not good enough to get me signed. So then I finally feel like I'm about to catch my break. There's this fire ass song that came out in New York. It's called Wait, Wait, Wait a Minute. Wait, Wait, Wait a Minute. They hit me up that they wanted me to be on the remix with Remy Ma and 50 Cent. And let me tell you something. I didn't even, this is why I fuck with Remy because I don't really know Remy like that. And when that song came out, I definitely didn't know her at all at all i haven't seen her and i keep hearing that she wanted me to be on that remix with her and everything and i was like oh my god this is gonna be my big break everybody gonna hear my voice finally finally so the guy that the song was the manager at the time they said that the remix was too long so they had to take me out of the remix and i was so heartbroken because i felt like that was gonna be my chance that was gonna be my chance for real but they had to take me out of it whatever so my mixtape is out at the time. My mixtape is out at the time. And I'm doing party hostings for fifteen to twenty thousand dollars. So what me and my manager put together, because a lot of these labels, they felt like I right, yes, she's popular, but is she only popular because she's funny and she's on love and hip hop and her social media are people are really listening to her music? Like, yeah. There's numbers on her music and everything, but is this shit really real? So for us to show them that it's really real, the parties that I, these promoters that was booking me to do parties, we tell them, hey, listen, instead of y'all booking us to to host y'all parties, why don't y'all book performance venue so I could have mini concerts, so I could have mini concerts so I could promote my show and we call it the underestimated tour. So the money that I they were paying me instead of hosting, we took it to do a tour so we could record it and film it. People listening to my music and rapping my songs. So we had a couple of openers. We had Castro Harlem, we had Swift on the Man, we have Josh X, and we had her celebrity opening up for me. With the fifteen and twenty thousand dollars that I was getting paid to do these shows, that money, I was paying for them to get hotel rooms, to get transportation, to get everything, but I wanted this tour to look super legit. So we went to Washington, we went to Connecticut, we went to Philly, we went to San Francisco, we went to LA, we was going everywhere, and I was performing my whole mixtape, and there was so many people coming out. It was like 900 people. Some places had 500 people. Some places had 2,000 people coming out. And we put that all together. And let me tell you something. When we put that all together, a couple of months ago, they wanted to sign me for 50,000, right? In a span of like eight to nine months, when we put all of that together, and we showed the labels that this shit was real, that we was going to every state and everybody was rapping my music, talking about ran down on that bitch twice. I pull up, like, what's up? Everything on fleet. They saw that and they saw that shit's not a gimmick. This ain't no social media shit. From state to state, people was rapping my fucking mixtapes. So I went from people was, motherfuckers were trying to sign me for 50,000. Then it went to 500,000. And then boom, Atlantic signed me for, I think 1.2 million. I right, whatever. Now I'm signed to Atlantic. And I feel and I feel like, oh, as soon as I sign to Atlantic, things are gonna like go crazy for me. I have to hustle again. Atlantic was trying to get some of the artists on their label to do a feature with me. Guess what? Nobody wanted to do a feature with me. Nobody. Niggas was like, oh, niggas was like, oh, um, yeah, let me let me get her number. And I was like, nah, don't give niggas my personal numbers. Because I was already a strip. You know, I, I've been a stripper. So I feel like if 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 somebody asked you, like, hey, would you do a song with Cardi, but you want my direct number, I feel like you're trying to fuck me. And I was not with it. Um, I met my husband, I talked to him, I showed him my music and everything. He loved it, and he was the first person in the industry to do a feature with me. 
my husband. He believed in me from the beginning, from the beginning. And you know, I just kept telling him like, I don't understand. I feel like I'm hustling, I'm hustling, like I'm putting out music, all of this shit. Like I keep going state to state, showing DJs my music. I don't understand, like blah, blah, blah. blah. Months later, months later, I did Borak Yellow and Borak Yellow just changed my life. Borak Yellow just changed my life. It just changed my life. But it didn't happen overnight. It didn't happen because I was in love with hip hop. It didn't happen as soon as I got signed to a label. I work for this shit. My ass for this shit. This ain't no fucking gimmick, nigga. This is fucking Cardi B. And I ain't fuck nobody. I ain't give nobody in this industry no fucking pussy, no producer, no DJ, no A&R, no CEO, no nothing. This is the big brim fucking work, nigga. Big hat work, putting work on my mama, motherfucker. Say no bullshit, nigga. The fuck? Know how many fucking doors was closed on my face? <laughs> you're funny, you're funny. Hey, listen, uh, yeah, we want you on your on our on your comedy. We want you on our comedy skit. We want you on the comedy skit. No, nigga, I wanna be a I wanna be an artist, nigga. Listen to my shit. How about you listen to my shit? Know how many people I went and said that to? Know how many knows? I got. I grinded for that shit, even for this fashion shit, nigga. Invested all my little money on this bad shit because I love, I love clothes. It was hard back then to, to, to get a front row, even at the blonde show for me. Me and my publicist, eh, we couldn't even get in some shows. We were trying to sneak in like, oh, if, if they see us, if they see us, if they see my, if they see my clothes, you know, they're going to, they're going to want to, no. It's easier now for females and I'm not even mad at it. But in 2017, 2016, 15, it wasn't like that. Now, um, now what I want to say though, too, right? When it comes to other female rapper success that are happening now and everything, some are gonna, some females are gonna come up faster than others. And a lot of people will think that it's that, oh, that's because their labels are putting money behind them, isn't that? The labels are putting money behind the girls that people are listening to. So if you feel like somebody is, is coming really fast and everything, that's because y'all listening to them. The labels only go with who is getting the most listens, who are getting the most plays, who are people are watching more, this, this, and that. Like that, you cannot blame nobody for that. You can't blame no machine for that. You can't blame nothing for that. Labels are only gonna put money on, on people, on, 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 on artists that people are listening to. And you can't, you can't hate on that. You just can't. That's why I can't, you can't, you can't hate on nobody else's come up. Cause everybody gonna be like, oh, Oh, the, the label's putting more money on this. The label's putting money on that. The label's is going to put money on the... They, they do analytics. Whoever the people are listening to, they're going to put the money behind it. So you can't hate on it. If you want your favorite female rapper, if you want your favorite male rapper to make it, listen to their shit. Promote their shit. Make a fan base for them. Once the label starts seeing that, that they have a hard following, they're going to follow up can't hate on the game that's the game the labels the labels could sign your cousin a label could sign your cousin if nobody listens to your cousin the labels ain't gonna put nothing behind it a label could sign your little cousin right now dookie bookie they could sign him right now If Dookie Bookie ain't making numbers and nobody looking at this shit, they wasn't putting no money behind it. It doesn't matter if they sign or not. So if you, if you wonder why some female artists or male rappers are getting more attention than others, it's because y'all giving them the attention and you can't be mad at that. Mm 
Yep. Yep. Well, I'm glad I gave you a little bit of her story. This is my story. One day I'm going to get a little bit more in depth. But I just wanted to remind y'all. You know what I'm saying? I just wanted to remind y'all. Cousin! Kina, you got to listen to my single. You got to come listen to my single. I know, I know, I know I've been friending, but I just, my mind is going fucking crazy, bitch, because you know, you know I'll be everywhere. But you got to come listen. Oh, shit. It's all about this album. This album is coming, okay? But I, I'll talk to y'all later.